Hi everyone, Chris at Cano here. I've been having lots of fun over the last few weeks working my way through the challenges in the Harry Potter Cano coding kit. But did you know that you can go back to the challenges you've already completed and remix to make them even better? Let's try one out. This is the Create Colourful Bursts of Fireworks challenge that you can find in the courtyard at Hogwarts. If I wave the wand around here, you will see lots of lovely fireworks appearing over the skies at Hogwarts. I completed this challenge a couple of weeks ago and saved it in my profile to play with later. Let's open this up though and have a remix. So click on the remix button here and you'll see the code appear. And what this code does is make fireworks appear at the coordinates of the wand pointer every one second. And as you move the wand around, it changes the color. So pretty exciting, but probably not as exciting as it could be. So let's see if we can do something to make it um, even more exciting. So I'm just gonna put my wand down so that I can do some coding. So I'm just gonna pop this here on the side. And the first thing we're gonna do is look at uh, making the fireworks bigger. So at the moment, every one second, a burst of fireworks happens. If we click on this little button here where it says seconds, milliseconds of frames and change it to milliseconds, now there are huge bursts of fireworks. So if I pick my coding wand back up and I wave it around, there's lots and lots of lovely, bright, colorful fireworks over the skies of Hogwarts. I don't know about you, but when I'm outside watching fireworks, there is not normally a big pointer in the sky above them. So I think it'd be fun for us to hide the pointer that is uh, attached to the coding wand. So this is really easy to do. We're just gonna go to the left of the screen and on the wand tab, just open that up and grab the code block that says hide wand pointer and just drop that in here underneath where it says every one millisecond. So now if I pick the coding wand back up and I, I center it so um, I, can, I can see where it is, wave it back and forth, there is no pointer. Now, if you get a bit overexcited, like I do sometimes, and uh, you point the wand totally off the screen and it goes a bit crazy and you can't find it again, don't worry. You can just take your coding wand, and point it dead at the center of your screen and hold down the button on it and it will recenter. So right now I'm recentering and getting these uh, light blue bursts of color. If I move left and I move right and I move up and down, uh, it works as you would expect it to. So we have made the fireworks over the skies of Hogwarts bigger and brighter and more colorful. Uh, we've got rid of the pointer so they feel a bit more realistic. Um, what I think they're missing though is some sound. Uh, when you see fireworks outside, there's lots of lovely explosions and whooshes. So I think we can add those to our creation here. So I'm just gonna put the coding one back down again so I can, I can do some coding. And we are going to need to add a part. So depending on uh, which challenges you've done already in the Harry Potter kind of coding kit, you might have found some that have noises and have music and have speakers attached. We're gonna to need to add that because this challenge doesn't have one um, as standard. So we're gonna click on this little uh, tab here that says add parts. That opens a new box which says um, add parts interface data hardware. Under hardware, there's this little speaker button. So we click on speaker and it adds a new tab on the left-hand side under all the different types of coding blocks that you can add. So if we click on the speaker tab, there's all the things there that are to do with making sound. But before we make sound, we need an event to happen. And I think what we should do is when we move the wand left and move the wand right, uh, it's gonna make some lovely fireworks noises. So if we click on events, and while wand moving, and that is already set to up, but if we click on there, it gives us options of up, down, left, and right. We're gonna start with left, and then we're gonna click into speaker to find some noises, and we're gonna start off with speaker play. So if you just grab speaker play, drag that there under while wand moving left, and now we need something for that speaker to play. So back into the speaker tab, and there is an orange box here that says wand wand cast. We're gonna grab hold of that, and put it into there so it connects to speaker play. And what you've just heard is the wand casting noise. If I pick up the coding wand again and I recenter it so it's in the middle, I move to the left, I get wand noises. So that's pretty exciting, but it's not quite right for fireworks. But that's okay, we've got some things we can change. So if we click on where it says wand, it opens up all the sounds that are available to you within the Harry Potter Cano coding kit. So there's wands, crashes, creatures, effects, music, and whooshes. And I know that the fireworks are under effects, so we're gonna click on the effects tab. And what that does is give us effects and a bell one. And so if I move the coding wand left, we get a bell noise, which also isn't quite right for fireworks, but we can change that, don't worry. So we're gonna click on bell one, and there's lots of options here. So bells, fires, fireworks, uh, whooshes, ignite, pop, water, whistles. 
Um, there's one here which is probably the best, which is a fireworks explosion one, because it makes the most sense for fireworks. So if we click on that, and now if I pick the coding one back up and I move to the left, there's fireworks noises. If I move to the right, we haven't got anything at the moment, but we're going to fix that. Uh, so we're going to repeat the steps we've just taken to add the ability for when you move the wand to the right, a speaker is going to play, and we're going to get another fireworks effect. First thing we're going to do is add another speaker. So we'll click on Add Parts. On the, the Add Parts box opens, we're going to click Speaker. This creates another new tab, which is Speaker 2 over here. Before we can play a sound, though, remember, we need an event. So we're going to do Events, and while wand moving, that says up, click on up, the options are up, down, left and right, we want to go right, and now we can add our sounds from the speaker 2 tab, so speaker, speaker to play, and we are going to go back to the uh, the sound effects button, and remember this makes one noises by default, so if I move to the right now, we get one noises, not quite right for fireworks, so into effects, and explosion two I think so now if I center our coding wand and I move to the right we get one fireworks noise if I move to the left we get another fireworks noise so now you can move the wand left and right and you get lots of lovely colors and big fireworks over the skies at Hogwarts how cool is that now don't forget to save your creation to Cano World. You do that by clicking on this save button here. So if we click on that, and what you want to do really is give this a, a name and a description that explains what it is. And there's two reasons to do that. One is so you can find it again and you know what it is. And the other is so other people that come across your creation in, in Cano World uh, can see what you've made and understand what it is that they should be doing to enjoy your creation. So let's give this a title that makes sense. So what the first thing we did was make the fireworks big. So big fireworks would make sense, but then we added noises. So let's go for big noisy fireworks. Just check my spelling there to make sure that makes sense. So big noisy fireworks. And then in the description, let's just say what this spell does. So move the move the coding wand left and right to create, I can't spell, <laughs> create big noisy fireworks over the skies of Hogwarts. That sounds good, doesn't it? So big noisy fireworks, move the coding one left and right to create big noisy fireworks over the skies of Hogwarts. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And that is now saving to Cano World. It's stored in your profile, so you can always find it there under your profile, but it's out in the wider Cano World so that other people can play with it and so they, they can remix it as well and see if they can make uh, your code even better. Um, and remember, you can do that with other people's code as well. So if you see something there on Cano World that you would like to try remixing, just click the remix button and um, and have a go at making something new and exciting. And then when you save it and you share it, don't forget to thank that person for letting you play with their code. I hope you've had fun remixing a challenge from the Harry Potter Cano coding kit with me today. Keep your eyes peeled for more remixes here on the Cano YouTube channel. Bye. <laughs>